Normally a game of Stellaris essentially unfolds as follows. You pick an empire, you settle your space, you compete with others, and go along your merry way. Now this expansion takes a similar approach, except you are late to the party, and everybody's already a few drinks in, and... Oh, well, you don't really know how to enter the room quite yet, so you'll need to figure out how to do that before you can do anything of note. Welcome to First Contact, the 17th expansion for Solaris, which focuses on all the interactions with pre-FTL societies and even giving you the ability to play as one. Now this is a story pack, which means it's a little bit leaner than your big expansions like your Utopias or your Apocalypses, but it's more fleshed out than a species pack. Coming in at a price of 15 bucks USD and or local equivalent. Now, let's break things down on what you actually get in this pack. Three origins. First, you have Payback. It's your classic alien invasion story where an alien empire has tried to take over your planet and you've managed to repel them. Starting as a primitive species, you will need to reverse engineer the invader's technology and enact sweet, sweet revenge, which can come in any type of flavor. Then there is Broken Shackles, which is very similar to Payback, except your primitives who've been abducted from your homeworld and have managed to rebel against your captors, and you now have your fellow former slaves, um, and you need to work together with them to strip down and reverse engineer the ship that you crashed on and to find your respective homeworld whilst building an empire. And then finally you have Fear of the Dark, where you spawn with a primitive world in your solar system and have all sorts of interesting interactions with them as they believe that the universe is out to get them. Are they right? Well, it's for you to find out. Essentially, it's a gamified version of the Dark Forest Theory. To facilitate this focus on primitives, the update has an entire new system to interact with them. New stories, new espionage operations, reworked observation stations, tons of new events, as well as a new insight system that allows you to learn things about the primitives in ways that you have never expected. For example, you may find out that their maths is completely different from all the other empires, so you can research that for bonuses on your end. Essentially, it's a system to make sure that you don't just invade these poor, poor souls and put them to work. Now, obviously, you want to stay hidden from these primitives whilst you observe them, so you gotta keep that prime directive in place, of course, and you can do that by using the new cloaking system. Now, during gameplay as well, you'll be able to discover this new cloaking technology, which will allow you to obfuscate yourself from those below with the bonus effect that you can also cloak your fleets for a tactical advantage. Science ships can now explore beyond closed borders with this technology as well, but this is a topic that I'll get back to in a moment. Finally, there is the addition of a brand new Civic that lets you really delve into the experience of being a primitive. Eager explorers put you in the shoes of an empire that left the cradle a little bit too early and decided that using alternative FTL methods rather than what the rest of the galaxy is using was a great idea uh, when you don't really have to function as of a, of a normal empire. So whilst you can get quote unquote out there, you'll have a serious amount of catching up to do. Finally, there is eight new achievements that you can add to your potential tally. Now, the big question, is all of this worth the price of attendance? Well, first of all, in the context of story packs, first contact lies very much in between things like Synthetic Dawn and Distant Stars. You will get a new Empire type, like the former, plus you also get a mix of events, like the latter. It brings a slew of new interesting systems and mechanics to the game. However, uh, some of it may be a little bit more niche than what you would expect. Whilst there is a couple of really cool events that generally spawn in space, a significant amount of the content is confined to primitive observation. Now, not that there's anything wrong with this. The new insight system that you can get from primitives is very interesting and enough for you to you know, choose to observe them before you kidnap all of them and once again put them to work. Now, the new origins are also very refreshing and quite unlike any of the ones that have been added previously, as starting as a primitive empire is a real challenge and they're labeled as such. Being a primitive really puts you on the back foot very, very hard and you'll need to pull out all the stops in order to make yourself successful. 
But the Ords themselves are also prime candidates for role-playing, the revenge story of payback, the crash slaves from broken shackles, the terrified primitive offshoot of your own empire in fear of the dark. They're all great little scenarios that will really spice up your Stellaris life, and they all have cool events all attached to them. The new villain, MSI, is a little bit generic, but that should not really crash the party. The cloaking adds a reasonable amount of additional tactical depth to the game. Having to keep track of where things are in space becomes more complicated if they're invisible. Fleets can pop out of nowhere if you've been neglecting your stealth detection systems, and if you go to war, it's very easily to, you know, get caught with your pants down. However, it's very easy to just forget about the existence of the system completely, and kind of similar to how factions are sometimes, because the amount of impact that it has on the game is kind of difficult to track, because a lot of the time, you just don't know that something is there, because, you know, they're cloaked. Uh, yeah, unless you're actively pursuing the system, uh, it's very difficult to forget about it, which is a little bit unfortunate, of course, until the war pops off and all of a sudden all your ships are destroyed by submarines. However, I do feel that the cloaking system should have had some appearance in the vanilla game, which is not really the case. Everything is regaled to the expansion. Just to being able to cloak your assigned ship really goes a long way with avoiding the annoyance that is close borders. A good example here is using cloaks in the L cluster to completely avoid Great Tempest ships. Uh, previously, you would have to essentially sacrifice a ton of scientists, which uh, with cloaking, that's, that's no longer needed. And I understand why it's not in there, and you want to keep some stuff exclusive. But it kind of closes the door when it comes to stacking new systems on top of the existing game. Even the espionage system from Nemesis had basic functionality put into the base game just so there is a room for expansion in the future using different you know, DLCs. Now the real star of the show, however, in my opinion, is the eager explorers civic it completely puts the solaris experience on its head with not just only having all the fun and struggle that is a primitive empire play it also completely removes hyperdrive from them initially and replaces with what can only be described as a type of jump drive effectively creating an empire type that employs a completely different type of ftl than everybody else now you can swap over to hyperdrive if you want to and it's probably the better choice as there's a lot of quality of life options missing from this particular Civic, mainly auto exploration and auto constructions are completely non accessible if you use this FTL type, but still. Now, Eager Explorers is just such a wonderful take on the road not taken, and I absolutely adore it. Uh, some of the detractors may interpret this as, you know, they took the original FTL system out of the game back in 2.0, only to sell them back in. Uh, in a DLC five years later. I'm afraid this is just simply not the case. This is nothing like wormhole drives. This is nothing like wormhole uh, warp drives. It's a simple adjustment of the already existing jump drive technology. I understand where you're coming from, but this is not a hill that you probably want to die on. In addition, the Civic is basically an origin in cheap clothes. The only reason that it wasn't, you know, booted straight to origin status is that it, it's available to all Empire types, from standards to megacorps to robots to hives, and every single one has their own special version of it, which is really cool, and I guess it wouldn't make sense to have that as an origin type. Plus, it being a Civic also means you can have all sorts of weird starting combinations. Want to have privileges that flee their soon-to-exploding homeworld? Double it up with Doomsday, you can totally do that. Want to have primitives who scavenge the remains of a grand empire? Mix it together with remnants. Tomb World starts, Ring World starts, there's all the options available. Any origin can be mixed up with this, and it is just wonderful. Of course, not the three origins that come with the pack, everything else that has come before. And I really wish we saw more stuff like this, because it's a completely new type of gameplay, and it's just wonderful oh and on top of that eager explorers makes use of the new primitive models yeah the primitive ship models that nobody seems to be talking about or advertising at all and they look so good i, I don't know what's going on here but they look awesome they no longer look like it's the iss space station that just got engines strapped to it and and they're being sent on their way no these looks like these things look like straight out of an orion spacecraft or something along the lines from passengers or something along those lines but yeah now here comes the answer to the question that everybody is asking would i recommend stellaris first contact yes 
However, and there is a big however, you should only try to tackle this particular expansion if you already have a couple of Stellaris games under your belt. The new Origin as well as the Civic that comes with them require a lot of deep understanding of what is going on within the game. How does the economy work? How do ships work? And that sort of thing. Because you really need to keep an eye on these things in order to survive because you do start off on the back foot towards everybody else. The cloaking system is very much a bonus added on top of a wide rate of options that you're already being given. Uh, the massive amount of new events and insight technologies really adds so much more flavor to the game as well. And if you're somebody who really wants to make their Stellaris universe more rich with events, empires, species, origins, then First Contact is definitely something you will want to pick up. And it firmly goes into the category of buying it once you think you're up to the challenge. Now, what I do need to mention is that the added UX in the game uh, is problematic. Solaris has been growing a lot over the last decade, and it really starts to show. UX elements like buttons are being put into already cluttered locations. And it's becoming more and more of a challenge to really navigate the already busy UX landscape that the game presents. To the point where new players may be actively repulsed by its apparent complexity, even though that's not really the case. A good example of this would be ships that don't, uh, don't have cloaking devices having cloaking buttons on them, for instance. Which is unfortunate that they're there and doesn't make them feel all that special. Now you also have to remember that continued sales also improve the quality of existing expansions through the custodian program. For instance, the accompanying free patch, there is a massive addition to dick sites and their outcomes uh, through new technology and buildings that you can unlock. And that's all for the archaeological expansion, uh, which is pretty exciting. And yeah, it's, it's all out of this free content, but it's pretty cool. So in the end, the decision is yours. If you feel that now after watching this video that this is the expansion for you, go ahead and pick it up. If not, well, you should probably pick up Utopia first and maybe a little bit of Distant Stars, maybe a bit of Ancient Relics, and then maybe dive into this. It's definitely something that you can pick up before you delve into things like Species Packs, but it's definitely something that, again, you want to pick up after the major expansions because it does have a lot of complexity that comes with it and it can be pretty challenging of course some of you may like uh, you know punching yourselves in the face right off the get-go then this one is all for you in the end thank you so much for watching uh, if you want to have more of these reviews for solaris feel free to click on the video that is on your screen right now it is from the previous one that came out it is of course toxoids I want to thank all my patrons for making this video possible. I'm going to go ahead and log off here. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, maybe just this once, it's a good idea to observe those primitives before we steal all of them and put them to work in the mines.